reason why the hadith is da'if, and there are other examples as well, for the most part in fiqh, we also don't rely on da'if hadith. But just because the hadith is da'if does not necessarily mean it is wrong in fiqh. And I'll give you an example. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi was born in 80 Hijri. The Prophet ﷺ passed away in 10 Hijri. The time between the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi is about 70 years. Now there is a smaller chance of something being da'if in this 70 years. Now Imam Abu Hanifa is born in 80 Hijri. Imam Bukhari is born in 194 Hijri. There's over 110 years difference between Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi and Imam uh, Abu Hanifa. Almost double this distance. Over here it was about 70 years. Over here it's about 110 years. So there's a double the distance. That means that there's more chance that something becomes weak after Imam Abu Hanifa and before Imam Bukhari. Are you following? Because there's a longer time. However, there's a possibility that from Imam Abu Hanifa till the Prophet it was not da'if. But as time went on it became da'if. Following or not? So just because Imam Abu Hanifa quotes a hadith and it may be considered da'if after him does not mean it was da'if when he said it. Keep that in mind. That's something about fifth people forget and they, they, they miss. Uh, but on these tangents we will continue going on and we, we won't finish. But anyway. So now in, in Sahih Bukhari, there's a hadith that Musa alayhi salam met Adam alayhi salam. This is Sahih hadith. And Musa alayhi salam said to Adam alayhi salam, he said, Adam, right? He said, yeah, I'm Adam. Our father Adam, right? He said, yeah. I'm the father. So the one we all came from. Said, yes, that's the Adam I am. You used to be in Jannah, right? He said, yeah, I did. He said, really? One fruit? You could have had anything in Jannah. And you seriously ate that fruit. Really, come, like, honestly speaking, come on. You could have had anything in Jannah and you went... You know when the kids learn a little too much? And then they begin objecting to the parents? This isn't only you with your kids. This is Adam and Musa too. He says, did you really have to eat that food? You got us all kicked out. If you didn't eat that food, we would all been chilling in Jannah. Who are you? Musa. The Musa that got the Torah, right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, where did you hear about me getting kicked out of Jannah? How do you know about this? Who told you? He said, I read it in the Torah. He said, oh, okay. When was the Torah, when did Allah compile the Torah? When did you have the Torah munazzal? And he said, the Torah was munazzal, or it was compiled or dictated to Lohar Mahfuz 40 years before the creation of Adam. So Adam salam said, Are you criticizing me for something Allah had destined 40 years before my birth? Fasakata Musa. Musa salam stayed quiet. And he said, Really? You're, you are criticizing me for something Allah wrote that I will be doing 40 years ago before I was even born. However, when Adam is speaking to Allah, what does he say? Does he say, Ya Allah, you already decreed this for me. You know, how are the people going to get to the dunya if I don't eat this fruit? No. What does he say? Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Oh my Allah, zalamna anfusana. We have oppressed, I have oppressed myself. Wa illam tawfir lana wa tarhamna. And if you don't forgive us, wa tarhamna. And you don't have rahmat on us. Lanakunanna min al khasirin. We will be from amongst the losers. But when he talks to Musa alayhi salam, he gives dalil over there. Chupraho, stay quiet. You're smaller than me. What do you mean? Come and telling me what I'll be something I did. It was destined before. Over here he gave dalil. But over there, he didn't give dalil because Allah is bigger than him and above him. But Musa is not smaller than him. He's young. He's his child. So over there he can dance and he can say whatever he wants to him. So this shows you that if when it comes in front of Allah, parents mistake, you go and you can 
ask of you. Don't justify your mistake in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But someone who is smaller, younger, and they're arguing, why would you come and arguing to me for? It's not your place in your haq and your maqab to come and argue and debate. Anyway. فَتَلَقَى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ نَهْبِقُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا All of you come down and get to the dunya فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى If you get hidayah from me فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says The ones who follow my hidayah فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ They won't have any fear They won't have anxiety وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And they won't have sadness They won't have depression They won't be in a dark place I'm not talking about clinical depression I'm talking about generic depression And generic and normally the same day-to-day sadness and the, and the prison we have in our hearts Allah says you have hidayah لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ you're not going to be you're not going to be scared and you won't be hazan you won't be in in depression mufti taqi usmani many of you might know might be knowing a few weeks ago he was shot at anyone know this or no mufti taqi usmani is arguably one of the most knowledgeable scholars alive today the man is on a different capacity i have ijaz and hadith from him i have read and studied many of his books he has a art if this man writes something about an issue on Islam, he can simplify the most difficult and complex issue of Islam. He's a master of Islamic finance and the most humblest person you'll meet. Remember, our tradition is not only finding the most knowledgeable person, but the most righteous person. Ilm and Amal come together, not just Ilm. Otherwise, we can go to Cornell and Harvard and Yale and look around for people who studied Islam in Cornell, Harvard and Yale. There are people who are in Congress and there are people who are on security advising teams of the President or this that have more Ilm and more knowledge. But if they don't have Amal in their life, their Ilm means nothing. Shaitan also has more Ilm, but he has no Amal in his life. So it means nothing, it amounts to nothing. This is a very important justification that we have to do between knowledge and Amal. Mufti Taqi Uthmani. He has a lot of books in English too that uh, uh, on Islamic finances. Anyway, he's, he's a very apolitical person, doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't say anything that's a little, you know, here and there, just very loved by all. Even if you disagree with him, you love him. That's his capacity. A few weeks ago, he was going in a car with his wife and his grandchildren. I think his grandchildren were in the car, I think. And there were few bikers that came and they opened fire on his car. It was the first time it had ever happened. He's a, he's a scholar and close to in, in, his, in his 70s. And the bikers came and they opened fire on him. And then they came back a second time, they opened fire. Some of his, his drivers, they passed away, bodyguards, some of them became shaheed in this. When these bullets were being sprayed, when his driver got hit, the first thing he said to his driver was, why don't you come in the back? You are hit, let me drive the car. When he, the whole car was shattered with bullets. Windows, everything. Not a single scratch came upon him. That night, I know you have, you, you ladies sisters have a group. I will find the lecture, I'll send it to Sister Zeba or Sister Razia to forward it to the group. Listen to his lecture. The man just came out of a life and death situation and he gives a lecture. You cannot even tell he's just been through that experience. You can't tell. It happened in Karachi. It happened in Karachi. The man finishes. He goes and he gives a lecture. As if nothing happened. And someone said, What, what zikr were you reciting? You know when something happens, when the plane throws a turbulence, when there's a little bit of turbulence, la 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 And mashallah, we all zikr comes on our tongue, right or wrong. Little bit of, so you know, someone asked, the Sheikh, Sheikh, when it happened to you, what zikr did you say? And you know what he said? I didn't say any zikr. I was already reading Surah Al-Kahf when it happened, so I continued reading my Surah Al-Kahf. The one who doesn't have amal, has to find an amal, but the one who has natural amal, it's just coming. You can take me today, you can take me tomorrow, I'm ready to go. 
I'm ready any time. I'm waiting for the Malik al to hug the Malik al and say, Jazakallah khair, you have taken me out of this jail and you've taken me to the Akhirah, to my Allah. Prioritize yourself. Prioritize your life. Anyway. فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And those who disbelieve and they, they deny us and they deny our signs أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They are the people of Jahannam هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And they will be there forever and ever and ever Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about he speaks about the nation of Adam alayhi salam who was the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this dunya. Now out of all of the nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had and all of the representatives he had and all of the uh, and all the nations that had Nabis, no nation had more Nabis than Banu Israel. No nation had more Anbiya than Banu Israel. No nation had more Kitab than Banu Israel. All the three major Kitab besides the Quran were in Banu Israel. All the Anbiya from Ibrahim alayhi salam to Rasulullah were from Banu Israel. So Banu Israel had a certain favor in Allah's eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Israel, atkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. O Banu Israel, they are called Banu Israel. Did I tell you who Israel was? I did tell you who Israel was? I did it? Israel, who is Israel? Yaqub alayhi salam's name is Israel. He had 12 children. These are the 12 tribes of Israel or Israel that you hear is named after Yaqub alayhi salam. Out of them, Yusuf alayhi salam was the Nabi and from his lineage, Anbiya came. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. O Banu Israel, remember the ni'mah that I have bestowed upon you. Wa awfu bi ahdi, awfi bi ahdikum. Fulfill my promise, awfi bi ahdikum. And I'll fulfill, it, I'll fulfill the promise to you. Wa iya ya farhaboon. Everyone, we fulfill their promises and we want our promises to be fulfilled. Allah says, I have a promise with you. My promise starts with you. Me first. Listen to Allah, everything is yours. Disobey Allah, nothing is yours. Now I'm scared. But if I do a little bit of salah here, a little this, people are going to say, oh look who they think they are. They think they're Molvi over there. Oh you don't want to backfight in the da'wah. If you say, let's, sisters, let's not backfight. People say, oh who do you think you are? And you're scared of what people will say. Allah says, When you're scared of someone, only be scared of me. Only be scared of me. وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ And believe, believe in what I have revealed. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ It affirms, it, it, it coincides with what is with you already, meaning the Torah. وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَ كَافِرٍ بِهِ Don't be the first person to disbelieve. وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا And don't sell my ayat, don't sell my verses, don't sell my signs. ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا For a small price. This doesn't mean that if there's a big price then it's okay. It means that any price is a small price. Don't be scholars for dollars. Don't be أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجَيْبِ Be أَلَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ the one who believes in the ghayb, not bil jayb. The one who believes in the unseen. Today the culture is this, unfortunately. Everywhere you go, you, uh, first thing they ask, uh, what, is the, what is the price of the course? What is the cost of the course? So I think this is the greatest bid'ah of our times that we are living in right now. That everything has been monetized. Everything has been brought into this concept. We read about the stories of those before us. Ustad, Shagir. Student teacher under a pomegranate tree. Why this ilm has been transported on the backs that were sweaty and bloody. This ilm wasn't done in a, a nice coliseum and an auditorium with mashallah people paying money for a for this is this is the new fitna of this today's day and age. It's become a society class and it's become this level, it's become this the dunya the one who are Ahlullah, the dunya is not in their heart. And the ones who are Ahlul dunya are not Ahlullah. That's the bottom line. Our, 
what can I tell you on this topic? وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِي سَمَنًا قَلِيلًا What can I tell you on this topic? I know my own teacher, Mona Abdul Quddus. The man... I don't know if anyone has ever seen the Arabic dictionary, Al-Qamus Al-Wahid. If anyone has seen that dictionary, Al-Qamus Al-Wahid, he was... Mona Wahid was the man, authored it with two students. He was one of the students. This man is a brilliant Arabic speaker and Arabic writer. Amazing. While we were studying, we noticed his weight was getting less and less and less. And one of my classmates were very close to him. He was said among these things. My parents came to visit. My sister had graduated as an alima. And my parents came for her graduation. So when they came, Mulana invited them over her home. And he said, you know, that uh, come have dinner at my home. So when my family came and they had the dinner, one of the kids remarked, one of the kids, small little kid, four or five years old, maybe at that time he was like four or something, he remarked and he said, Ami, Ami, who's coming today? Because of whom we get to eat meat. So when my mother relayed this to me, I asked my friend, I said, why would the kids say something like that? The teachers, mashallah, they don't make very good earnings, but they make more than what the other imams generally make, which is below average, but still, they, they, they don't make so low that they're needy. So I asked him, I said, why, why would the kids say something like this? And he says that for the past six months, Mulana has and his family has only eaten dal and very and vegetables because they are saving the money that they are making to invest in kitabs and books so they can distribute the books. And wallah al-azim, from his daughter till his smallest son, I think there's like six, seven kids, everyone is a hafiza, hafiz, everyone is an alim, and everyone also has a secular degree, either in accounting, engineering, or in that house, nobody wastes one minute. Nobody. Not a single minute is wasted in that house. I have seen it. I tell them all the time. I said that people are always guiding other people, but the one who guides his home is very, very rare. His daughter, every one of his children have already authored kitabs. Every one of them. I'm talking about children who are 12 years old. 11 years old, the small boy that was 3 at that time, now he's about 12 years old. He goes and he proofreads kitabs in Arabic. Allah, Allah just doesn't give like this. Allah gives when you become His. Remember one thing. There's a certain barakah in not having the dunya between us. There's a certain barakah for it. And until we don't adopt this culture and appreciate this culture, barakah won't increase. Mufti Raza al Haq, my, 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 the Grand Mufti of South Africa. He is, you know Sheikh Abdul Nasser Janda? Hello? Sheikh Abdul Nasser's teacher is Mufti Naim. Mufti Raza al Haq is Mufti Naim's teacher. So, his teacher's teacher is who I had the opportunity to study with. He was, one of my reasons of loving poetry was because he's a great poet as well. So he has a book called Qarar al-Din. Even Junaid Jamshid used to read some of his poems. Uh, Junaid Jamshid knew, rahimahullah, knew him very well. He had actually told us that he had seen the Prophet ﷺ in a dream and because of that he had said this one, one specific poem he used to recite. Hazrat Mufti Sahib would get his kitabs the books would be in the madrasa bookstore. Who wrote it? The man wrote it himself. But any time a guest came, he would give them a book, his book. And he would buy his own books from the madrasa. Let me capture that again. The man authored the kitab, gave it to the school, then buys his own book from the school at full price to give to guests who come and visit the school. Kick the dunya out of your heart. 
Shake the dunya out of your heart. وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Don't wrap حق بالباطل with falsehood. Speak the truth. قُلِ الْحَقِّ وَلَوْ كَانَ مُرَّدْ Speak the truth even if it is bitter. And don't hide the حق وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Well, you know what the حق is. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاءَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish salah وَآتُ الزَّكَاءَ and give zakah وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ and do it in jama'ah Do rukur, pray with those who are praying أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِدِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْنُونَ الْكِتَابِ Do you tell people to do good? وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ But then you forget yourself. وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ And you have the Qur'an in front of you, and you have the Torah in front of you, and you have the Kitab. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you have aql? What does this teach us? That if you want to get aim from someone, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرْ That the one who is giving you knowledge of aim, تَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Cannot forget themselves, but they have to have aim and amal at the same time. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Whenever you need help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you need help in anything, Allah gives you this, this, the recipe. إِسْتَعِينُوا If you need help, بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek it through sabr and salah. First thing is have sabr. Have patience first. Don't get angry quickly. Compose yourself. Anytime something happens, focus on yourself. And focus. Calm yourself down. Breathe. Let yourself be at peace. Once you are at peace, then make a remark. What does Allah say? Have patience, pray salah, and then respond. By that time, you're cooled down. Don't immediately respond. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Two things. First, have patience. Don't get angry and then say, Okay, now I'm having patience. But sabr hai. No. There was a woman, she lost a kid. The Prophet ﷺ behind her said, Allah will give you more. And she said, man, get out of here. You don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I've been through. Later on, someone said, that was the Prophet ﷺ. She ran to the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, nee, 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 I didn't mean to. I didn't know it was you behind. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Innama sabar inda sabamatil ula. Sabar is when the first time the problem hits you. Not ten minutes later. When the first time it happens, your response is the response. After sabr to sabkuhi karnai, everyone has to have patience regardless at later on. You have to have it. You have no choice. Rather have it in the beginning, then be compelled to have it later on. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ and salah and sabr is difficult, but for those who fear Allah, khashirin, but for those who are humble to Allah, الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They are those who are mindful and they know that they're going to meet their Allah, وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And they will go back to their Allah. يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَتِيَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ O Banu Israel, remember those ni'mats that I have blessed you with. وَأَنِّي فَضَّلْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ And O Banu Israel, I had given you fazila above everyone else. You were the most favored of mine. Allah loved Banu Israel more than anyone else at that time. Why? What did Allah give them more than anyone else? What was it? Prophets. Allah loved them, gave them the most because of the prophets that Allah gave them. And then Allah snatched everything away from them. Listen to my next words very, very, very carefully. You are not the first city to be blessed with scholars. You are not the first city where people migrate and travel from all over for the mahal and the environment. Before Dallas, it was Houston. Before Houston, it was Chicago. Before Chicago, it was D.C. Before D.C., it was New York. Every one of these cities, people left their home and left everything. And in those five years, seven years, everyone said, Everyone said it. And before these cities, Islam thrived in Toronto and London and Johannesburg. 
And before that, it thrived in Cairo, and it thrived in Baghdad, and it thrived, thrived in Kufa and Basra. Today, no one even goes to Baghdad for, for any knowledge or for any mahal. There was a time that if you didn't go to Baghdad, you could not call yourself a scholar. There was a time. Allah gives ni'mas and Allah blesses you with ulama and scholars. If you don't do qadr of them, Allah takes them away from you and sends them to someone else. Allah has given your community and the entire Dallas community at large ulama after ulama. You have more ulama in your masjid than most cities have in the entire city. I know of many cities today in the western world that have less ulama than you have in your one masjid. Value and do qadr of it. Because a time will come when you will be looking for someone to guide your children and your family and you won't find anyone. Do qadr and value your ulama. What does Allah say? I, I chose you above everyone else. Allah chooses you. To remain as Allah's chosen is your choice. To remain Allah's favorite is your choice. Have qadr for the ilm. Have qadr for the Qur'an. Aspire that my child is going to become a hafiz. Aspire. Every family here should at least have one child or one grandchild memorizing the Qur'an. Every single one of you. Make this city the city that someone can say that in this town every family has a hafiz inside it. I came from a town in Johannesburg, in Lanasia. Where every home, forget a half is every home had an alim in it. Now you tell me that if every single family had a father and ulama, how, much, how do you think they'll get misguided? We have to develop the structure again over here. And that sacrifice doesn't come with financial sacrifice. It comes with the thing that is the most priceless to you. It comes with sacrificing the children. Putting them forward and saying, I want this child to learn the deen. Many years ago, my parents had to make the same thought process and say, this kid of ours, as you can see, there's no notes in front of me or something. And it's my time restriction, otherwise on each ayah and verse you can go on for hours and hours and hours. And this is the fadl of Allah. Could have went and studied anything else. Could have read and could have pursued anything. I was an honor roll student, exceptional in school. And where my parents, they didn't force me to go to Madrasa or Dharul. They didn't force me. I signed up on my own, but they encouraged. They showed me this was valuable. They removed the love of the dunya from our hearts. They showed us that money wasn't valuable and important. They showed us that this comes from Allah. And today, we have three, four dawahs in one day. Somewhere in someone's home, we start appetizer. One person's home, we have uh, first round. Second person's home, third person's home, we have second round. And the fourth home, we have dessert in. If you think the Mulana Sahib that you've invited to your home is having his first meal of the day, it's probably his second or third one. The Mulvis are not loyal in their dawahs. Allah gave so much, so much, so much. Allah has given so much honor, so much. The more we run from the dunya, the more the dunya falls at the feet. But it requires parents to sacrifice and encourage. Mona Ashraf Ali Khanvi Rahmatullah one time, in a fundraiser, he said, Today, I don't ask you for your money. Today, I ask all the honorable and respectable people in the community to hand their children over. He said, so tomorrow, I met a man yesterday, I was at his home. And mashallah, a well-off person, and he showed me his son, his son is studying to become an alim. And I said to him, the same story. And I said, tomorrow when your son becomes an alim, he's not going to be worried about his stomach. He's not going to be worried about his finances and this or that. Or he comes from a good family. Money means nothing to him. And he will say what will be right and he won't care about whether having a job or not having a job. That's up to Allah. Allah employs me. Allah keeps me wherever Allah keeps me. The truth will always be on my tongue. This is easier for those who have that support mechanism. They have that family to give them that support. But the sacrifice starts with you. Dr. Abdul Razak Iskandar, Hafizahullah, my teacher's teacher. And I also have Ijazah and Hadith from him as well. Great scholar. He said something very beautiful. He was once addressing a crowd of women. And I was there. I was, I was, I was preparing the food. I was, I was in the khidmat at that time. It was 2009. And he said a sentence. He said, 
تمہارا گود بچے کا پہلا مدرسہ ہے It begins with the mothers. And one day, inshallah, I mean, I want to get across, get completely happy just today, but I will tell you stories of great scholars and behind them is their mothers. Everything you see today from me, the little that you see, has no credit to me. It's my mother and father. My mother did khidmat of thousands of ulama, not hundreds, thousands of ulama. And my father has followed and sat at the company of thousands and thousands of ulama. And that's where we're sitting today. And I can go on and on on this, but... وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمَ لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقَبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعًا And fear that day, لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ No one can support another person, no one can repay another person, or no one can help out another person. وَلَا يُقَبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعًا And Allah will not take anyone's intercession besides, obviously, the intercessions of the Anbiya, and the intercessions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed. There are certain intercessions Allah will allow, but this is unsolic- unsolicited uh, uh, intercession. Meaning that, without the permission of Allah. وَلَا يُؤْخَذُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And Allah won't take another person in place. Adil meaning, yeah. Ya Allah, don't send my son to Jahannam, send me to Jahannam. Allah says, no. No one will be able to put themselves in that position. No, and no one will be helped. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the qiyamah, He tells you that no one will save you there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine the balagha of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is beautiful and perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right now He talks about qiyamah. He says that day, fear that day, where no one's intercession will be accepted and no one will be able to stand up for another person. Now Allah doesn't tell you the details of what that azab is going to be. But Allah tells you in the next ayah, remember when you're Allah who is Rahim, He saved you from Fir'aun who used to slaughter children. This was a dunyawi azab, and this is when your Allah wanted to have a rahmah on you, Allah saved you. But over there your Allah will not help you and Allah will not leave you. Over here Fir'aun won't be giving you azab, over here Allah will be giving you azab. وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ When Allah says, I, I'm not gonna, you're not going to be helped, Allah gives you the next ayah, look at me, I help those when and I save those that Fir'aun used to kill. But on the day of judgment, it's not Fir'aun that's going to be punishing, but it is I'm going to be punishing and no one to help you. وَإِذْنَا جَيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ Fir'aun comes from the Arabic word فَرْعَوْن which means the help that ran away. I've went and I've been to Cairo and I have seen the different pyramids and the different Ramses and the different pharaohs and the different people that they say maybe Fir'aun and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best who they are. Uh, a lot of mummies are there. It's hard to say that this one is Pharaoh, that one is Pharaoh. It's very hard to say it. وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ آل means the followers of Fir'aun. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله. Over here, آل means أهل, the family of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. But one meaning of آل is also Followers over here. Wa idna jaina kum in ali Fir'aun from the followers of Fir'aun. Yasumun akum su al adab. They gave you a terrible adab. Yudabbihun abna akum wa yastahiyun nisa akum. They did zibah. They slaughtered your boys. Wa yastahiyun nisa akum. And they let your girls live. Fir'aun saw a dream. He saw a dream that from Masjid al Aqsa a fire came and it wrapped around. his palace in Egypt. So he asked the people, what is the interpretation? They said, a boy will be born in Banu Israel, and he will be your, the reason of your fall. The, the story of Fir'aun begins with a dream. The story of Yusuf السلام, begins with a dream. When we get to Surah Yusuf, I will tell you all the similarities between the story of Surah Yusuf and the story of Musa السلام, because they are mirror stories. They're reflections of each other, different but reflections. And we'll cover that, inshallah.
Anyway, so Fir'aun began slaughtering the children and slaughtering the boys. And now, when he was slaughtering all the boys, the Coptic, the Qiptiyun, they came and they said that if you continue to kill all the boys of Banu Israel, we'll have no one to help us and do all the menial tasks. The cleaning of the gutters and making the roads and all of that building. We will have no one to do this for us. And Fir'aun then goes on and he says, okay, one year we will let the boys live and one year we will kill them. So the year that the boys were allowed to live, Harun salam was born. He was older. And the year the boys were supposed to be slaughtered, Musa salam was born. And in this there is a great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذْ فَرَقْنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرَ فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ Allah says, and then we split the ocean in half for you. فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ We saved you. وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ And we made, we destroyed Fir'aun and we drowned Fir'aun. وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you saw Fir'aun die. وَإِذْ وَعَدْنَا مُوسَىٰ رَبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً ثُمَّ اتَّقَتْتُمُ الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Then we told Musa, Musa, come to us for forty nights. ثُمَّ اتَّقَتْتُمُ الْعِجْلَ Then you took the عِجْل. The عِجْل is the calf. مِنْ بَعْدِهِ afterwards. وَأَنْتُمْ ظَالِمُونَ And you were the ظالم. ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَا عَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Then Allah says, then we forgave you afterwards so that you may do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which means after doing tawbah to Allah a person should do shukr to Allah that Allah allowed them to do tawbah. So tawbah and shukr should be together. First do tawbah, Ya Allah forgive me. And then shukr to Allah, Ya Allah Shukr and, and, and Alhamdulillah that you gave me the tawfiq of tawbah. How many people do sins and they don't have any tawfiq of tawbah? وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ And when we gave Musa a.s. the kitab, this kitab is Tawrat, wal-furqan, furqan, what differentiate between truth and falsehood, faraqa. Farq means to differentiate. Allah spoke about the differentiation or the separation of the ocean. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the separation of haq and batil that is mentioned in the kitab that Musa a.s. has. Umar Farooq, Farooq is called Farooq from the same Faraqa, same thing, separation, the one who separates between truth and falsehood. The Qur'an is also called Furqan. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ So that you may have hidayah. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَاذِكُمْ الْعَجِلِ Musa a.s. comes back, O oh my nation, you have done bulum by taking this calf as your Allah. فَتُوبُوا إِلَىٰ بَارِئِكُمْ فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do tawbah to your Allah and kill yourselves. فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ has two tafsir. One tafsir is, is that there are three groups of people. One group of people were those who did not worship the calf. But they also didn't say anything to anybody. The second group was those who worshipped the calf. And the third group was those who didn't worship the calf, but then they stopped and they told the people who used to worship the calf, don't worship the calf. So you have three people. One, two people who didn't worship this calf, and one group who did worship the calf. From the two who didn't worship the calf, one stayed quiet. Yeah, we don't want to We don't want to get involved in this. We don't want. So they stayed quiet. Allah didn't like the fact that they stayed quiet. Allah sends adab on a nation when a nation stays quiet, when there is haram and there is wrong happening around them. It is wajib and it is necessary with hikmah, with wisdom, to stop someone from doing wrong. If you stay complacent, you are in that. If you stay quiet, you are complacent in that sin. So, one tasir of faqtulu and fusakum is that the ones who worship the calf, they were commanded to kill themselves. This is one tafsir. One tafsir is the group that remained quiet and didn't say anything and didn't stop them. Their job was to kill their brethren. So now what Allah Taala did for them was that He made it completely cloudy. And they couldn't see what was in front of them. And they were just commanded to kill and this made it easy for them that they didn't see who they were killing or they didn't know who they were killing. ذَٰلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ 
that that is near to your Allah, that is, the good for, that is good from your Allah, and Allah forgave them. And Allah is the one who forgives and has mercy. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And when they said, Oh Musa, this was the habit of Banu Israel. You know when, you, when they spoke to Musa they didn't say, Oh Nabi Allah. They said, Oh Musa, hey Musa. This is how they spoke to Musa alayhi salam. You know sometimes when you get close to an imam or scholar, oh, you, you know, I, this, this is just uh, uh, azhar for me, this is just arsalan for me, this is just yasin for me, this is... Right? Your relationship with them does not change their maqam that Allah has given them. People, all, I know this was a bacha. yes, mashallah, he knew, also knew you when you were younger too. He also knew you when you were a teenager too. The adab and the title. Refer to someone regardless of how informal you get. Refer to them with their title. Look at what Banu Israel says everywhere. Ya Musa, Ya Musa. And how did the Sahaba refer to the Prophet? The Sahaba, 99% of the time when they spoke to the Prophet, they never said Ya Muhammad. What did they say? Ya Rasulullah. Ya Nabi Allah. How did the Kuffar in Makkah call Muhammad? Abul Qasim. There's an adab and etiquette. Now a kid goes home and calls his mother or father by their name. What are you doing? So the ulama and the mashayikh, especially, especially if you know them for a long time. It happens when you know someone for a long time. I just know them for a bacha. I just know them. Okay, mashallah, that's great. What do you accomplish by saying they know them for their bacha? Is there some speciality you have now that you know them for that long? What have you benefited from? What have you taken back? What have you learned from? That's the most important thing. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّىٰ نَرَى اللَّهَ جَهْرًا They said, O oh Musa, we're not going to believe until we don't see Allah jahra in front of us. فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ السَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْغُرُونَ And then a thunder came. And then they all were destroyed and they were killed. Musa a.s. said, Ya Allah, Banu Israel, you know them. First of all, they are the laziest and the most scared. And if I go with 70 people, and now first they said, we want to hear the Torah. The 70 people said, we want to hear the Torah. When they get there, they said, we don't know who, the, who Allah is. We, can't, we don't know if that's really Allah or not. We want to see Allah. Allah said, I'll show you see Allah. Thunder came, they all died. Musa said, Ya Allah, if I go back with 70 dead people, they're going to say, yeah, nobody's going to listen to me. They're going to be so scared, Ya Allah. Ya, this is Banu Israel, this is not a normal nation. Allah says, then we raised them after we gave them that So that you may have shukr There are many stories in the Quran of someone given death and brought back to life Someone should give a bayan on this one day The dead who came back to life In the, in the Quran, this is the, 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 the many many stories وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَىٰ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Banu Israel, I was doing tawaf around the Kaaba a few weeks ago and I had arrived at Haram at around 9, at, at, at 8.15 a.m. in the morning. And I had only two hours in Mecca, then I had to run to Medina. Uh, I, I, was, I was coming back from England and I found out my mother was in Medina. So I made my ticket so that I spent one day in Medina to, and I had to give a lecture in Houston. So I only had, if you include my travel time, I only had one day in between. So I flew into Jeddah, drove to Makkah, did my Umrah uh, in, within, an hour, hour and, uh, within an hour and a half, did my Umrah, went to Medina, spent one day there, the next night grabbed a flight and came back to uh, Dallas. I had some, uh, came back to Houston for my lecture there. So when I was doing this tawaf around the Kaaba at, at 8.15 a.m., and as the tawaf is going on, the sun is rising. And then the sun begins beating on your back, and then you realize, because we, we, are, we are so protected in our cars, in our homes, in our stores, in our masjids, in our buildings, that we don't realize the heat of the sun. We don't see it. We experience it for a minute, two minutes. It's too hot, it's too hot. Turn the AC on. One minute, two minutes. These people lived in the heat. Because today, we, everything is on our fingertips. Turn that AC on, easy, the heat is gone. You don't even feel a sweat doesn't drop by. And look at it outside. Sometimes just go and appreciate. So now, we don't ever appreciate the clouds because of this. The clouds mean nothing to us because of our structures that we've built. 
this structure has made us lose the value of clouds and the shukr of clouds. Anyway, so now while I'm doing tawaf, I see the sun rising and now you can feel the heat. You're doing tawaf and, it's, and it's, it's, you're looking for that side of the Kaaba that has shade. And as I went first round, second round, but the third round, I noticed that the sun wasn't beating on me. And I looked up and I saw a cloud covering the sun. And I said, Ya Allah, when do we ever do shukr of your clouds? And Allah says, when He talks about the ni'mat, the first ni'mat that He gave Banu Israel, the actual ni'mat, what does He say? وَظَلَّلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ Wherever you went, we put a shade of clouds above you. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى And we gave you manna and salwa, turunjabeen and batayr. Manna is a type of a sweet. Salwa is a bird, a small little, what do you call it, like a quail? Turunjabeen is like a quail. With it, uh, I'm sorry, manna uh, is the dessert and salwa is batir. What is batir? Batir is like a quail, right? Like a quail. Now, the Mufassirin say one of two things happened. Either when they woke up in the morning, they would find birds right there and they could grab them and they could do zibah of them. Adhan time? Adhan finished? Let me give Adhan, right? Salat inshallah, we will continue from Wadallana alaykum al ghamama tomorrow. And we're going to pick up the pace inshallah so that we can do more verses and less of this. Any questions? Any questions we have before Adhan is given? This is your Mahabba and Shafqa. Is there any questions anyone has? Today? Going once? Going twice? Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your Muhammad. Jazakallah khair. Allah is like you.